God can't help you. God can't hear you. God can't forgive you until you have forgiveness in your heart. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I have a question for you and I would like some clarity on it. In one of your recent videos I watched on YouTube, you talked about atonement to the father, the physical father. My relationship with God is getting better. I pray on a regular basis, but my relationship with my biological father is not great at all. Does atonement to the father have something to do with me forgiving my biological father? So this is a biblical concept. And there's a, there's a, there's a passage in the gospel where Christ says that before you come to the temple, if you have anything against your brother, go and resolve it. And what he's referring to is the fact that if you have any animosity, you have any anger, you have any emotional hangups with any people in your life and you want to come to the temple and, uh, and, and give a sacrifice to God, right? That's what he's talking about. Before you come to the temple in order to commune with the Father, with God the Father and, and, and through the sacrifice, he says, don't do it. Don't come to me. Don't come to the Father. Do not come to God if you have anything on anybody. That means God can't help you. God can't hear you. God can't forgive you until you have forgiveness in your heart. That is the essence of the gospel in many, in many regards is forgiveness, forgiveness. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. That, temp, that, that forgive us as we forgive others is a key part of Christ's mission. We can't walk around with grudges and then try to sweeten ourselves up to God. So whether it be your father or anyone, but mainly the father, I'm going to tell you why in a moment, but you got to let that shit go. You can't remember a moment ago, I was talking about the state of our souls upon death. If you have grudges in your soul, in your mind, in your emotion, when you die, that goes with you to hell. You're going to carry that into eternity. We have to become free. Like I said before, light, right? When I use the word light, I'm not talking about the new age idea of, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Light, right? Like, like, like the light that turns on the light, like you flip the light switch. That when I talk about light, I'm not talking about that because that's too much of a foreign concept. Nobody is light. Don't let them fool you. You know what you do? You become light, right? Light, like not so heavy, not so dense, right? Spirit is light. Not light, bright, but light as in not heavy. So you have to unburden yourself if you're going to atone with the Father, with God the Father. You can't come to God with burdens and expect him to, 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 uh, to be able to, to... See, that word atone, let me, let me even use, break this word down, atone, so you could better understand what I'm saying. When you Think about that word tone. Right. If you ever play any instruments, anybody ever play any instruments and or you sing. Right. My brother's a singing teacher and they will get into tune. Right. They would tone you tone the instrument. Right. What does it mean to, to, to tune or get into a tone? Right. That is that means you resonate. What's the tone? Right. The tone is a vibration. Right. Because it's a sound. Whatever it would be with your throat would be the instrument. Right. To atone with means that there's no hiccups. There's no herky-jerky. There's just a very smooth, whoop, 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 and no hiccups. Just, whoop, right? So you're vibrating equally. You're vibrating equally. You're vibrating equally with God. To vibrate equally with God, don't mean that we're equal with God, but to vibrate with God means to walk with God, to be, to be in your natural state, free from anger, free from sin, free from sadness free from human material garbage not an easy thing to do but this is this is the state that works we're, we're called to we're called to that perfect state right whether we can do it or not whether we like that idea or not it doesn't matter god calls us to a perfect state so that we could be with him in perfection right that's what it is to be in heaven it's to be perfected we are to be perfected and if we're not perfected we suffer or we're per we got to purge that imperfection right so you could be doing all the right things but when you die if you have this hang up with your daddy you god's gonna look at you like hey uh, looks like we got a little bit of a little we got a little uh, smudge here a little there's something a little unperfect here and god only deals with his perfect creation 
All of God's creation is perfect, but we corrupt it because we've been corrupted by Satan, right? And so that's with everybody, but when it comes to your father in particular, father in particular, it's very important because God, God makes himself known in the 3D on earth in humanity through the father, through man. And you know it because in Genesis, the story goes that he created the man first, the man, then the woman, then the children. It goes in that order, whether people like it or not. There's a reason why that order exists. The order exists so that because love flows down, love flows down from the father, God, the father into Adam or the new Adam, which is Christ, and then into the rest of us as men, then into women, and then into the children. And respect moves up. Respect from the children, respect from the wife, respect from the man to Christ, and, and of course, uh, the father is in Christ. Right? There is this order that has to happen. And so for the children, you as a child, you get to respect your mother, right? And most of what we call respect for our mother is a perverted form of mommy love, right? But that's a different, totally different story. And then there's respect for the father. But if you, don't, if you can't reach up through respect for your father, the love from the father can't flow down to you. This is, this is, this is, this is the mechanics of spiritual love. And so you don't have to be your father's best friend. You don't have to agree with your father. You and your father don't have to be buddy buddy fishing on the weekend, but you must just out of just pure justice, respect him out of justice, respect him. Why? He brought you into this life. You are his essence, right? You were swimming around in his balls and he decided or he or, or that faded moment happened where he blew his load in your mom, right? You got to you have to acknowledge that you have to respect that. If your dad wasn't the man he was, no matter, no matter how much you resent him, you wouldn't be here. And it's good to be here. It's good to be alive. I hear people blame their parents for giving them life. And those are the people that needs to be stomped on their neck and, 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 and slapped around. They're idiots. You, every soul wants to incarnate on this planet. We all want this opportunity to be people. All the angels in heaven are watching us and saying, man, I wish I was down there because they know better than us. They'd be like, wow, I wish I was down there so I could beat that temptation, so I can grow stronger in my soul, so I could overcome that beta blue pill, baby boy bullshit mindset. I, they all know. All, they're all watching us, like rooting for some of us, right? Rooting for us. Get it. Figure it out, people. Come on. And they're trying to help us. So that is a blessing to be alive. And your father gave you that blessing. Out of pure justice, this is why in the, in the Ten Commandments, you have to respect your parents. It doesn't say, it, in the Ten Commandments, it doesn't say respect your parents if they're respectable. Right? It says, honor thy mother and father so that you can live a long life, live a long, healthy life. In fact, it's the only commandment in, in the Ten Commandments that has a promise attached to it. That if you, if you honor your mother and father, you will live a long, healthy, happy life. Something to that to degree. Right? I'm not a Bible scholar. I know you're going to get some people that are like, don't exactly say those words. Well, based on what translation it says something to that essence. And so you, my opinion, and this is, I got to be completely transparent. A lot of this I learned by watching Jesse Lee Peterson and speaking with Jesse Lee Peterson. Jesse Lee Peterson is such a based red pill gangster of an old man uh, that I just spent hours and hours watching his videos. And he's got me convinced. And I do now believe, and it is Bible uh, biblical, and it's true, that if we are going to get through as men, if we're going to be strong men again, if we're going to be the leaders, we're going to be the authorities, we're going to be the men that we're meant to be, we have to patch up shit with our dads. We have to. Like I said, you don't have to be best friends with them, but you got to respect them, right? Meaning, like, I understand that you're my father, and I, I appreciate the fact that you helped bring me into this world. I don't agree with you, but I will not disrespect you. Very important, very important, very, very important. But it sounds strange in a world that's, we're, we're wrapped up in rebellion and rabble rousing. This whole world is rebellious of that entire structure. So we're addicted to mommy, we hate our daddies, there are no dads, and God is dead. This is why we're in, that's why we're in chaos. If we're gonna, you know, I said it earlier today that, you know, I walk around saying that make men strong again is my, is my mission, but it's only in service of one thing. 
to make families strong again. Because a culture that has weak families is a weak, degenerate, falling apart, crumbling, de decadent culture. We're struggling as a culture because families suck. Families don't work. And the reason why family don't work is because men are weak. Whatever happened with your father, he succumbed to his weakness, right? Either he couldn't handle your mother or he still had uh, infantile beta ways and attachments to his mother, right? Men are, men are weak because we've given our power over to women. And women are inferior men trying to walk around leading us. It's a, it's a weird, screwed up time to be alive. But it's a great time because the cream will rise. And I think that's you too. I think you're gonna rise. I think you can figure it out. I think it's gonna work out great for you, bro. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.